Hey, what's going on? All right, so basically what I want to start doing is I want to start like just trying to develop this series of, of lecture videos and it's they're all technically based so it's not really I mean you're gonna see me you're gonna see me but it's all the material is based on actual science all right um, so my ultimate goal is organic semiconductors and that's that's going into the new age of electronics for the future it's future electronics but it will be here within our lives lifetime okay so right now I'm pretty much working with inorganic semiconductors uh, uh, most mostly titanium dioxide right now as, as far as a semiconductor is concerned but it, I'm, I'm, I'm in I'm on course to learning much about the electronic aspect of chemistry and that's where I've always wanted to be anyway so um, basically a good way for me to improve my understanding overstanding understanding is to actually just go ahead and, and let individuals know what I know so another attempt that I'm trying to make is actually to develop a curriculum for organic semiconductors it sounds a little bit strange but you know I love it so much that I would like to be able to establish some sort of you know system to, to understand what's taking place when you're dealing with these types of materials okay not inorganic but organic so here is the uh, flat band potential and electrochemical impedance spectroscopy I'm gonna be talking about this right now this is a second part of a of many presentations that I've already given but you know to start off on a video I think this would be might might be kind of good all right so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off and speaking about uh, the electrochemical analysis of a, a nano sheet form of titanium dioxide and then I'm going to move on to flat band potential analysis of nano, nano crystalline form so that's the crystal form of titanium dioxide and the last one I'm going to do is uh, which might be in the second video you might get, this is part two because these files really can't be that long if you want to upload them but I'm going to speak about a process to generate what's called a Machowski block okay so this is straight tech this is just straight science that's because that's what I'm trying to do so for those just to let you know this is more academic I'm an academic cat and it's about knowledge of the physical law so that's what I'm, I'm breaking down okay but anyway so here's an electrochemical here's an experiment that employed electrochemistry in order to generate a band diagram uh, that would represent this nano sheet structural form of titanium dioxide and uh, Pretty much, this is a crystal form of, of titanium dioxide, and it was used as a as a reference. Its redox properties were uh, compared to that of the nano sheet structure. So, in this experiment, pretty much, I'm going to refer to a ten layer sheet of this form here, ten layer and a five layer sheet of this form, and then I'll compare it to the reference, which is this crystal form. All right, so cyclic photometry was conducted uh, in a non aqueous uh, electrolyte containing lithium ions and um, pretty much these are cyclic voltammograms uh, which show the tin layer the tin layer uh, nano sheet and the crystal form of annotase all right so looking at both of them and I'll explain what cyclic voltometry really is in another video but for this particular video looking at them you can see they have the same form they look the same as far as shape but what you're seeing is actually a poorly resolved cathodic peak and a well-defined anodic peak. All right. Now these anodic peaks, all peaks are due to the generation of current to some in some form, some degree. Now this current that you see here, these these hills that you can see, pretty much are are due to the reduction oxidation of titanium. But that process is is, is accompanied by the diffusion of lithium ions, like in 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 into in the lattice and out of the lattice of the electrode and so what I mean by that basically is that the current is a, a result of the reduction oxidation of titanium but it's also that reduction oxidation takes place due to the fact that lithium is diffusing onto the surface of these electrodes or these systems all right so basically you could also see that the size of these di these diagrams are different they're different sizes now that's due to the fact that when lithium diffuses to let's say these this reference here the crystal it will diffuse it will move into what's called an interstitial void onto the surface of, of this structure and fill it it'll fill that void 
but by doing that what happens is it hinders uh, further or additional lithium ions to penetrate deeper into the three three-dimensional framework right so hence the, the current that's generated or that you observe is really representing pretty much lithium populations on the surface of this structure here instead of in, internal current as well whereas here this nano sheet lithium can not only attach to the external surface portions of this structure but it could also go internally and attach or or connect with uh, titanium um, with respect to the internal surface area so hence you have more current generating okay and here is a UV vis so redox processes affect UV vis or or pretty much you could observe the system dynamics by UV vis and this is of the nano sheet all right the polycrystalline shows similar this is this is like electrochromic behavior uh, you know electrochromic uh, but anyway so polycrystalline showed a similar diagram as this nano sheet and basically in here in this particular experiment optical spectral uh, optical uh, absorption spectra was recorded after 60 seconds of polarizing this structure at a given potential all right, it was done at various potentials and all the, it, the only separate it's like 0.1 volts difference in all the potentials but it was polarized at at multiple potentials and then the spectrum was recorded and this is the diagram that was overlaid it was that was generated from overlaying the separate trials so basically the focus of this data was above and below 323 nanometers and the reason why is because if you actually look kind of like if you were to, I don't know if you can see it because you know sooner or later I'll be in like a, another room with a project, projector screen I'm gonna really try to get that and you can see everything clearly but anyway as of right now I don't know if you can see it but it's right here it's like there's a point where the absorption enhancement and reduction it is there's a change in between there so in that at that at that point it's at 323 nanometers so above this portion here that you see at the top, that's due to what's called intraband transitions. All right, intraband transitions, they're like, let's say for electrons, they're transitions between like the conduction band and the valence band, or they could be between like transitions between quantized levels within a particular band. All right, uh, this is due to transitions taking place within the conduction band between quantized levels. All right, now, over here, see, so but the absorption is enhancing. The change in absorption is positive. It's enhancement, absorption enhancement. Over here is called re absorption reduction. Okay. Now the absorption reduction, basically, when 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 the absorption is reducing, as you keep, you know, making the potential more negative and more negative, and more negative. Basically, what you're doing is you're increasing the band gap energy. So that's what that's usually indicative of. But get this though. So as as you increase the band gap energy, every potential as you increase it, as the band gap energy increases, while you input electrons, more and more electrons into the conduction band, that's called a a Bernstein shift, a a, a, a Bernstein shift, Bernstein shift. All right, it's when you increase so band bands have ab absorption edges and you could increase the absorption edge the energy of that absorption edge and if you do that simultaneously as you increase the band gap energy which is actually taking place because you're increasing this edge here as you go further and further negative with the potential as that's happening simultaneously that's called a Bernstein shift so that's that's kind of like the dynamics of the system all right uh, so pretty much the point at which the potential at which this optical absorption changes is like the onset potential it's called the flat band potential and the wavelength at which it happens would be your band gap energy okay so basically well let me go back all right so i don't know if you can see it but there's peaks here even though they're upside down they're peaks and all these peaks pretty much can like align they pretty much line up around 275 nanometers so the author of this experiment wanted to 
study the system at 275 nanometers and also 800 nanometers because you could there's difference in absorption that I guess is detectable at that wavelength as well so they, they plotted all those points right now the way they did it is they took a voltage and they, that was the reference voltage for the nanosheet structure it was negative one volts right at that at that voltage they, they recorded an, an absorption that was the reference absorption now the x axis to all these plots is the change is the potential the potential at which absorptions were, were taken but the y axis were the y coordinates of this plot those y coordinates were manipulated and the way they manipulate it is with this math here i hope you can see it I'm not sure if you can, but pretty much all Y coordinates were calculated using the reference absorption. And that's how they got all these, these points, all right? Here's the math, it's absorption minus the reference absorption over the potential. Um, so basically, this is a reduction portion. This is when the, the absorption was reducing, and this is when the absorption was enhancing. Over here, they plotted the points and they fitted them on lines, and pretty much the intersection of the lines uh, or the threshold was where they got uh, an accurate value, so to speak, of the flat band potential or the onset potential of this change. All right. Um, so this pretty much came out to be negative 1.27 volts onset potential, and pretty much they wanted to do the same thing over here. They weren't able to do it because in order to fit this plot here with curves, uh, you need uh, two two values, and that's the constant, uh, the donor concentration. Uh, atoms donating the electrons or holes, and then you need the density of state, effective density of state, which are actually the carriers. Like how many? What's what's the magnitude of that population? Uh, both of those values can really develop a, a distribution curve, a distribution of density of states that you could fit to this plot. But they didn't have they didn't have those those original values, so they couldn't do it. I pretty much put this up here to show you that down here, in order to determine the onset potential for the reference, which was the crystal. Um, pretty much they had to take a plot for where it was enhancing, the absorption was enhancing and reducing and plot them on the same plot. And the deviation from those two plots was where they, they determined the onset potential. All right. And so for this particular one, it was negative 1.15 volts. All right. Um, so finding those values, they ended up with a band diagram looking like this. So the lower edge, the lower edge of the conduction band for the nanosheet structure, the nanosheet was 0.1 volts higher than the upper edge of the conduction band for the crystal. And the upper edge of the valence band for the, sh the sheet form was 0.5 volts lower than the lower edge of the valence band for the crystal. And so pretty much the, the conclusion for this system for the nanosheet sh structure was that photo photo generated holes and electrons from the nanosheet had more redox power they had more reduction reduction oxidation power than that of the crystal all right so look I'm, i i got to pause here or else i won't be able to upload it the, the file will be too big now i just do a part 2 which goes into another uh part of this subject matter and it's going into actually uh, band chips. We're looking at flat band potentials. So I'll be right back. Flat band potentials. <laughs>